Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Andiamo La Cucina. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, welcome. I like to make a lot of things from scratch, such as homemade ricotta, mozzarella, a lot of good recipes that we have out there. Today we're gonna to be making um, zeppoli de San Giuseppe, St. Joseph's zeppolis, which are basically a cream puff. So what you're gonna need is five we're gonna make the custard first. You're gonna need five egg yolks. You're gonna need a quarter cup of cornstarch, half a cup of sugar, okay? And two cups of milk, which you want heated just under a boil, which it's basically almost there. I'm also making homemade ricotta tonight because the St. Joseph's pastries, I'm gonna wind up doing some with the regular cream and then I'm gonna fill some with, um, a cannoli cream, so I got a lot of things going on in the kitchen, so we're going to take this step by step. Um, yeah, so. So to the egg yolks, we're going to add the sugar first and cream it. We're going to whisk it. And I'm going to add the whole thing at once because I, I'm pretty good at whisking. So just want to cream these real good. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that hot milk and we're gonna temper the eggs slowly. So whisk, get that sugar and egg nice and whipped. You're also gonna need some orange zest to go into this. And this, um, this cream that we're making for, this, for the um, Zeppelin San Giuseppe is like a two process. So it's gonna go back on the flame. All right, and then we got the um, cornstarch. Put in half, mix it. Oops. And be careful because it likes to fly out real quick. So I already, like I said, before I started the video, I already had the milk. Oops, oopsie. That was not good. That's what I get for working at the corner of the counter. Just bear with me a minute here while I clean this up. I'm just washing this off real quick. I'm gonna dry it. I'll get the floor in a minute. Okay, so back to this cornstarch and egg. Mix that real well. Because that cornstarch is what's gonna um, thicken the custard. Okay. I think it's mixed real well here. And now we're gonna pour in the milk little by little and um, temper those eggs. And then it's gonna go back onto the flame, onto the stove. Nice mess. <laughs> Just wash my hands real quick. Let me check my ricotta for here. I don't think it's quite a temperature, so I'm not gonna measure it yet. So you might hear the game in the background because we're big soccer fans in my house, so you might hear some of the game, you might hear people scream goal. Anything's possible. Okay. Alright, so the milk is done here, it's just under a boil, and we're going to start to pour this in slowly. So a little at a time, 
and whisk. And we're going to do this until we finish. We're finished with the milk. Then we're going to take this mixture, put it back on the stove, and we're going to stir, stir, stir till it thickens. And then it's going to go in the, we're going to add um, some vanilla and orange zest. And then we will um, put it in the refrigerator cool. And when we do that, we're going to put a plastic wrap that's going to sit actually on top of the custard so it doesn't form a film. Okay. Whisking. A little bit more milk. You want to add a little bit of time because you don't want to cook the egg. So a little patience goes a long way. And you just keep whisking it. And again, you bring this just under a boil the milk with two cups of milk. This is a very easy recipe. It's just, you know, takes a little time. That's all. Okay. I'm just gonna rinse this pot out real quick because we're gonna pour it back in. And this wants to drop on me again. back in. Okay. And back to the flame here. And we're going to put it on a low flame. And we're going to mix this constantly. Bring a little bit closer. So we have the egg mixture in the pot over a low flame, and we're just going to stir as it thickens. Once it gets thick and it comes almost to like a little bit of a boil, we'll turn it off and then we'll plate it and cover it with saran wrap to basically um, cool. I got the milk going here for the ricotta. Let me see where I'm at. I probably took on too much doing both of this video for the ricotta, but I'm trying to get things done, accomplished. So I'm just checking the temperature because I want the milk to be at 180 degrees. And we're almost there, we're at 160. Once this is out of the way, it'd be great. But like I said, I wanted the fresh ricotta because I want to make a cannoli cream to also go into the San Giuseppe cream puffs. You can make different variations. So I'm gonna make the original. I'm also gonna make one filled with the ricotta um, cream cheese. I might make one with a raspberry uh, whip 
or pistachio, I'm not sure yet. I will see what comes. I hope you guys have been enjoying the videos. I'm gonna ask you guys again to make sure that you like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the little bell so that you can get the videos as they come up right away. You don't have to wait for me to post on the page. Um, also, you wanna follow the page. A lot of good information. I am gonna post something on how to make your own cake flour because buying it in the store is expensive. It costs more money for something that costs you pennies to make. Also, I'm noticing in the stores, there's a lot. Of, it's happening again where there's not a lot of product um, missing like if you want to buy pistachio paste it's not there a lot of things so and this is thickening up already so want to mix and stir and I lowered the flame a little bit because I don't want it to catch up on me here but this doesn't take long you just want to stir and let it gradually um, thicken. Just trying to give it a good stir here. As you can see it's thickening. So I'm trying to do this and do the ricotta at the same time. Wish me luck here. I'm just gonna measure the ricotta, but this is thickening up nice. I can feel it in the whisk. As I'm whisking this, it's getting thick. And this is on a very low flame. It's on like three, and I'm already really thick. I'm gonna show you here. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see it. Oh, we still got time with the milk. So take a look here and see how thick this is. See how quick it thickened. So we're gonna keep stirring until it gets nice and thick, just under a boil. But this is looking really good. I'm happy with it. Wow, that was really fast. And mind you, this is on low flame, okay? This is something I wish I could put my KitchenAid on a flame. <laughs> I need to get one of those other mixers. So that, I'm gonna let that sit for a second and check again the temperature of the milk here to see if where I'm at. So I think I'm getting close. And for the ricotta, I want it creamy, sort of dry. It's not there quite yet. And this is already starting to give a boil, and it thickened really nice. Could you see how thick that is? And make sure that you stir, stir, stir because you don't want to get lumps in this. like pudding. That's what you want, a nice thick custard. I'm going to raise that just a little bit to see if it's 
see where I'm at. And And you see, it's, it's like puffing, making noise, starting to boil. So we're gonna shut this off, take it off the flame. And we're gonna put this in back into the bowl. But let me go ahead and wash that bowl real quick. Okay, so back over here, we're gonna put the mixture into the bowl to cool off. And the last thing you want is for this thing to get a film on it. So that's why we put the, the plastic wrap on top. When this starts to smell really good is when you put the orange zest in and the vanilla, which we're gonna do here in a second. I'm just trying to get everything out of the bowl, out of the pot. And make sure you stir constantly or else you're gonna get stuff that sticks to the pot. And you don't want that, you don't want that kind of flavor. Let me just check my filter real quick. See where I'm at temperature wise. So I'm doing a gallon of milk, whole milk. It's on medium flame and I want the, I want this to get to 180. And I'm almost there, I think I'm there. Just give me one moment so that I could put this to rest. Yeah, I'm there. Let me just a minute, I'm sorry, I sort of like disappeared on you. I'm just gonna put the vinegar into the whole milk there so I can get the ricotta going. So I did a gallon, I shut off the plate, I put in some salt, and I'm gonna put a third cup of white vinegar. I'm gonna take it off the flame. Give it a nice stir. And I'm gonna cover it. I put some salt in there. Okay. 
All right, so we have the cream here, okay? And we want this to cool off. But we're gonna put in our orange zest. I have about two teaspoons, a little bit more. You know that I like this stuff, so in it goes. We're gonna put a teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm just measuring with a regular teaspoon. There she goes. We're gonna give this a nice stir. Oh, now it smells really good. Big difference. I wish you guys were here so you could smell it. Make sure you guys, when you're doing this, like I said, you want to stir, 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 okay? Don't let it get lumpy. Make sure when you put the eggs and you put the sugar in that you stir it real well, and then as you add that milk, you stir good. On the stove, you want to continue to stir. All right, I'm going to get some plastic wrap to put over this so you guys can see. And it's going to go in the refrigerator. Probably would have been a good idea if I had the plastic wrap already cut and waiting, right? Got my plastic wrap here, fighting with it a little bit. And we're gonna place it right over the here, but we're gonna let it go in and touch the actual custard here. So that this does not form any kind of film. You know that, that when you make, um, pudding and if you leave it and it's still hot it starts getting that film this will prevent it see it's covering it nice and thing so I'm gonna let this cool off a little bit outside the refrigerator and then it's gonna go into the refrigerator I'm gonna take a look at my gotta here just to take a peek it's looking real good it's gonna make a nice cannoli cream I see I'm all full of constantly all full of Anything, cornstarch, flour, whatever you might want to call it, it's, I'm wearing it. So let's let this cool off, then we'll come back and we'll do, we'll work on the cream puff mixture. So I'm gonna finish up with that and then we'll start the cream puff dough, okay? All right guys, so now we're gonna work on the dough for the cream puffs. So right now I have a cup of water, one tablespoon of sugar, and one stick of butter. We want that to come to a boil, because after that comes to a boil, we're gonna add a cup of um, all-purpose flour in there, and we're gonna basically make like a big, thick roux, cook that flour. So it's almost getting there. I have my to here, you can see I just made earlier for the cannoli cream. I'm gonna go ahead and plate that and put it away. So while this is starting to boil, I'm gonna go put that in a pot. It's nice that when you make your own ricotta, you need a bigger spoon here too. Oh, it's working. I want this to cool off. And I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator so tomorrow, we're doing this in steps by the way. So tomorrow when I, um, how nice that the gotcha rolls up nice and firm. It's not like the store bought that's all watery and really can't use it the way you, you know, wanna use it. 
or if you make a lasagna, your lasagna comes out watery. So it's nice when you make your own, your own stuff. And that's almost boiling. It's on a medium flame. So any minute now it'll start to boil. so I work in steps sometimes you can't do everything in one shot all right guys so this is here at a boil it's gonna wait a little bit more just to make sure that it's boiling completely and we're gonna add the flour with a cup of flour in here and stir it until it gets basically all cooked up and absorbed. Then we're gonna let that cool off and we have to add four large eggs one by one, room temperature into that um, flour mixture that we're making here in the stove. And we're gonna add um, some orange zest in that as well. All right, so it's at a boil, as you can see here. And now we're gonna go ahead and put the flour in. rest of the flour in and we're just going to stir this keep stirring 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 and lower the flame a little bit more as this cooks up pretty quick and you can see here it's making a very thick Tastes like, you see that? But we want to continue to cook this and stir it until it forms like a film on the bottom of the pan. Like you'll see like a little film, but see how nice that's coming out? Stir, stir, scrape and stir. Make sure that all that flour is cooked basically absorbed with that butter and that water mixture and that tablespoon of sugar i repeat the ingredients to you just in case you miss something there. I want this to cook really good. And then we're gonna have to let this cool off. So we're gonna let it cool off, then we'll come back and add the four whole eggs to the um, dough here. Make sure you stir this good. I try to look to see if there's any pockets of um, flour that might have formed that I didn't catch while stirring. And if I see it, I just try to blend it in. This 
a little bit more. I'd rather work slow than too fast and you wind up with not what you wanted, so. It's really nice, came out really nice and happy with the dough. And you can see it here, nice pliable dough. And it's forming like a film on the bottom here, if you could see, see that? That means we're getting there. Once you see that, that film on the bottom of the pot, you know it's ready, okay? And just a little more. All right, guys, I'm gonna let this cool off and then we'll add the eggs in. All right, guys, so this is nice and cooled off. I'm gonna put it into a bigger bowl only because when I put the eggs in, it's gonna splatter, okay? So we're gonna add in the eggs one at a time until they're incorporated, okay? I'm gonna use a hand mixer. I'm gonna get this going a little bit, break it up a little bit, and we're gonna add one egg at a time. Okay? Some people like to actually um, put their eggs in separate bowls, but I don't need to. I, just, I could basically do one at a time. It's not a problem. In the meantime, I have the oven preheating to 400 degrees. It's going to go in a 400 degree oven for 20 minutes, and then we're going to lower it to 350. And we're not going to open the oven. It's the same thing like a cheesecake. If you open it up to look at them, and you're going to, um, you, the, the cream puffs are going to deflate. So, add another one in. I'm letting that incorporate real nice. Egg. I'm just going to whip this up really nice. It takes a few minutes. I'm going to add a spoon out just to get what's on the sides. And you'll see it comes into a nice, pasty, thick pastry. I'm going to stop this for a second and just scrape the sides here. Now to this we're also going to add some orange zest, which I have in the refrigerator. I kept it in there nice and cold. It could be room temperature. I just have to put it in there because I didn't want it sitting out. So it's about a tablespoon or two and this came out really beautiful I'll show it to you here in a second I'm going to scrape this again one more time Done, but I just want to give it one more little spin. Plus the oven's nowhere near temperature yet. One more little spin. Okay. 
done. Okay. Just rinse it off my hand with usual. going to plate this. Some people um, actually pipe this, but you don't need to. Just use a spoon and we're going to put them onto the plate here, okay? So I have a can with some parchment paper, as you can see here, and we're going to just take about a tablespoon or two of the dough, like that. And we're just gonna drop it onto the parchment paper with our finger. That's one. So I'll probably do four across and then, and three long way. So let me move this a little bit closer so you can see. You get about 12 of these, so. And I might just make these a little bit bigger, only because I'm gonna send these off as well. So you can see here how I'm doing this, right roll off with your finger. These will be really nice too. They'll inflate really beautifully. And you probably hear the game in the background because yes, I'm listening to <laughs> the soccer game. I'm a soccer fanatic. That's the only thing I really watch as far as sports. And so I can't say it again how proud I am of Italy winning the cup. So I'm gonna put this one here in the middle of those. And I have room for one more. I could have made this, I could have made 12 of these, but. you do this by rolling it off of the spoon, you want to sort of straighten them out a little bit, like smooth them out. You just do like that with your finger, like roll on it a little bit. one and like I said you can pipe these some people pipe them fancy like but to me I like that rustic look I like the cream puff to look the cream puff I don't care for it to be piped really to be honest with you so I'm just smoothing these out a little bit for 20 minutes so you want to set a timer okay because then you're going to lower it to 350 one more 
here. Like I said, you get 12 out of these, but I use the pan that's just a drop smaller than what I usually use. So I get some huge ones, which I want anyway for plating and for the video. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my hand again. So you can see how they came out. Basically, I smoothed them out a little bit, made them nice and smooth looking. So when they puff up, they'll be all in the same form. Okay. One day I'm going to find the parchment paper that fits exactly the hand size instead of having to fold it. That's one thing I hate about parchment paper. They do sell ones that are strips that I did see, a little bit more expensive. So I sort of deal with what I got. Okay, so at 400, they're going to go in, it's going to ding here any minute. I'm gonna put them in for 20 minutes and then I'm gonna lower it to 350. I'm not gonna open up the oven. Do not open up the oven or you'll get them, they will deflate on you. Once they're ready, we'll take them out. We're gonna pop a little hole in the side of them and put them back in the oven for them to continue to dry out. Once they're dried out, then we could cut them across the middle and fill them. And by then we'll have, um, we'll be making the fillings again because that custard, we have to put heavy whipping cream and fold it in, and then I'll have the, the cannoli cream made, so all you have to do is watch me fill. All right, you'll need some maraschino cherries to decorate and some powdered sugar. All right, so there's the 400 degrees. They're going in for 20 minutes. All right, guys, so we're back. They're done. Again, they were at 400 for 20 minutes. Then we lowered it to 350 for 15 minutes or so. Take these out of the oven. The oven is still warm, but it's off. And you can see how nice and big these are. We're gonna pop a little hole, just with a knife, a little hole on the side of each one, because they gotta go back into the oven. And they gotta dry out some more. You want these to be nice and dry so that when you fill them, they don't get soggy, okay? So one more on this one, okay? You can see how nice and big they are. They're nice and they're still very hot. See that? All right, they're going back in the oven for about another 15 minutes with the door pried open. Just the same thing, almost like cooling them down temperature-wise, like we did, um, we do the ricotta cheesecake. All right, so while those cool off, I'm gonna go ahead and um, Leave them in, not cool off. They're in there for another 15 minutes with the door pried open so that they could cool off and get nice and dry inside. All that moisture will come out and they get nice and dry. And then we'll fill them, okay? Hi guys, welcome back. So we were ending off with the um, cream puffs coming out of the oven. The custard that goes into the sandwich that the Zeppelin is done. It smells awesome. It's got a beautiful orange flavor to it, aroma. So I have whipped some heavy whipping cream that I put in this bowl here. It's about a, a cup that's prepared to the quantity that we have for the custard, which I'm gonna put right in there. And we're gonna just fold it in. 
So I have a couple of things going here. I have the ricotta, homemade ricotta of mine. You can see the video on that, on how to make your own homemade ricotta. You remember I was doing it at the beginning of the video, and that's for some people call it spingy, which is the cream puff and cannoli cream filled. So we're just gonna fold this in to the whipped cream. Make sure we get it well incorporated. Some people pipe these in, but because I'm doing so many different flavors, I'm gonna spoon it in. And then we'll plate them and you'll see how they came out. So as a, in the mixer, I had 16 ounces of my ricotta and about a half a cup of sugar and it's blending into that. While it's blending and I'm mixing this, I'm gonna go ahead and add a, you could use regular vanilla, but I'm using Panangeli vanilla powder. I'm just gonna roll this. And I'm gonna put it in here. I just wanna to try to keep the color as white as I can, so that's why I'm using the powder. And I'm gonna add couple drops of orange blossom water. Not the whole while, just a couple drops. And a little bit of zest of orange. About a tablespoon, not much. And we'll allow that to continue to get smooth and incorporate. I mean, one second here, I just want to scrape the sides of the bowl. I want to make sure everything gets in there. Right now, I have to say, I'm very happy with the consistency already thus far. It's only been blending in here in the, in the food processor for a, in the KitchenAid stand for a little bit. I just turned it on just before I started the video. Okay. Just gonna continue to do this here. And I did prepare a couple of other fillings um, as suggestions so that if you wanted to fill it with something other than these, you could. Or if you want to do a variety. But you see, they were very simple to make, not hard. Anybody can make this. Okay, so I'm going to get a spoon. And I got a plate here to plate it on. So let's go ahead and get the first one. You can see they're nice and airy inside, as they should be. And we're gonna fill this up nicely. Oops. I'm actually gonna pop these all the way through. I think it'll, it'll be nicer to look fuller. So I'm using a serrated knife just to cut through. Okay. You can see the orange um, zest in here baked into the dough. Smells so good. Okay. Place that here. Then we'll, I have some heavy whipping cream and some raspberry that are folding in. So we'll make one with a raspberry filling. You see I'm just folding it in. I have this prepared because I don't want to waste too much time on the video that it come along. Okay, so let's plate this one up.
it's really pretty. You can even do this with blueberries, um, a lemon custard, whatever you like. And look at that, how beautiful. Like that on there. And then I have one that I'm gonna do with the lemon whipped cream. Just gonna fold this in. And it's probably best to start cold again if you warm up the Nutella just slightly in the microwave so that it's easier to incorporate. It's still a little warm, so it's fine. It's folding in. And then the heavy whipped cream that I did, um, again, it was like one cup of heavy whipping cream to that custard. And about a half a cup on these other ones that I decided to make. My kids love cream puffs with Nutella. So let's get the next one going. Some people don't cut them all the way through, but because I have so much filling, and I don't want it to go to waste, I want it to fill up as much as I can. And this is the one with the Nutella again. Like that. We could also take, um, I have some nuts here, some hazelnuts that I'm gonna sprinkle right in the front of this. As you can see. And I think I got one little nut or two into this, so I just want to pull it out. Alright, I think I can only clean this basically done mixing here. I'm going to give it just another little whip. And we're going to add some chocolate chips in it. Give me just a little shrink. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to fill this one right now. I'm going to come back in a minute because this has got to sit in the refrigerator since it's been whipped so many times, so long. It needs to get the flavor needs to like rest. So I'm gonna plate this into a bowl and then I'll come back, we'll plate this and we'll finish topping off the sun just had put with um, a maraschino cherry and some powdered sugar. All right guys, so the pasta cannoli cream is done. I'm gonna go ahead and plate some of those. Again, nice and airy. The reason why we let the ricotta to sit a little bit this is you want the flavor to get full of everything that's in it so you want to give it time to absorb those flavors so sphingy is what they call this one with the ricotta in it and the chocolate chips looks like i really filled these Give me one moment. Okay. I'm gonna put a couple little chocolate chips here. Around the sides. And if you wind up, um, making too much of the filling. You could always use these fillings and bake a cake and put it in the middle, which would be fine. So now we are going to, I did pipe the heavy whipped cream just to put on top here. I think this looks pretty when you do it. If you could see that, okay. And to this, we're going to add a maraschino cherry on each one. Just such a, this is a pretty looking dessert too. And then we're going to take some powdered sugar. 
I have a small one of these, I just don't know where it is. And we're just gonna dust, dust, dust. Looks like enough to me. I'll bring these closer so you could see them. But you have the ricotta, you have the St. Joseph original, raspberry, and your Nutella. Okay? Listen guys, again, I'm gonna thank you for tuning in, watching all the videos, um, sharing with your friends, inviting them to the page. I do appreciate the support. Um, I'm gonna continue to ask for that support, for your friends, friends, to go ahead and invite people to the page. And um, till we get cooking next time, I wanna thank you again for joining Andiamo La Cucina. It's been a pleasure um, being with you guys today and yesterday making this video like i said you can always prep things in advance and that's what i do sometimes so you'll see me have a different outfit on you'll see my hair's pinned up my hair down depends on what i'm doing so um i hope you bake some of these and you post your pictures on the page so i can see how they came out leave a comment like share and um let's see what we get to baking next thanks <laughs>